Hi, it's Tamani again. How are you today? Absolutely gorgeous weather here today. Yeah, it's um, early August, midwinter here in Australia, but you'd never know it. <laughs> um, the other day I told you a story about one of the most magical things that ever happened in my life, and it was the story of how a lot of things happened, a lot of coincidences happened, uh, that led to me meeting my husband in Fiji. Well, I was, <coughs> I mentioned that the story of, of him having three sons from his first marriage, they're all living in Australia now, and a daughter. Um, and I wanted to tell you the story about this daughter and a few of the coincidences that happened in her life that I found just totally amazing. Um, she was born um, to another woman out of wedlock and she's about the age of my husband's middle son. And Frank, my husband, knew that she was born because the mother took him to court for um, child support. But at that time, Frank wasn't working, he was living on a farm. So nothing proceeded with that. So he lost touch, completely lost touch with um, the mother and the daughter. And um, he had told me about her. The family knew about her, the daughter, um, but no one had had any contact with her for a long, long time. Anyway, in 2003, we went to Fiji. We actually sold our properties, two properties we had here on the Gold Coast. I took 12 months leave from my job, unpaid leave, and we went to Fiji to live for a year uh, to start with and also to set up some businesses over there intending to, uh, to live in Fiji the majority of the time. So that was fine. We got there and we bought a house and we bought a farm and we were having a fantastic time and we were supporting his parents. The main reason that we went was because of Frank's parents. My, both of my parents had died the two years before and he wanted to spend some time with his parents who were ageing. So about halfway through the year, I, I can't remember the exact date, Frank's phone rang, his mobile phone rang. And he t when he told me, this, he said, this is exactly what happened on the phone. And this voice said, hello, Dad, do you know who I am? Frank said, yes, I do. And at the time, she was 20. And uh, somehow, she'd found Frank's phone number through one of Frank's brothers. And uh, Frank said, where are you? And she said, oh, I'm on the bus coming from Latoka. And he said, what time do you get into Suva? And she told him the rough time. He said, okay, I'll pick you up. So we went to Suva and we waited for her. I'm going to have to tape this again. <laughs> it's funny how it, it just... I can really live what she went through her whole life, never seeing her father, never knowing him, never meeting him, and always having that desire there. So anyway, it was wonderful to meet her. She was holding her little son in her arms. He was just a few months old. It was the first time we'd met him as well. And um, we immediately um, got her to come and live with us, with the, the daughter. She had a daughter as well who was three, two or three at the time. So um, we lived together for the rest of the year in a house in Suva and it was fabulous. Uh, her husband came as well at the time and um, we just really got to know her and it was it was just wonderful the way she um, she welcomed us she didn't didn't criticize Frank for anything for him not contacting her or anything like that anyway as we got to know her better we found out that she was brought up on a river in a suburb of uh, Suva on the railway river river that's where her mother was from in the village and she said that um, pretty much every weekend for quite a few years, 
uh, this guy used to come fishing with his um, kids. And uh, Fijians identify where they're from by where their father is from or where their grandfather is from. And Frank's father was born on Ngao Island, so he calls himself a Ngawan. And um, uh, our daughter's mother had told her that her father, my husband Frank, was from Ngao. So she identified as a Ngawan. And she said that this guy that used to come fishing, he was from Ngao as well. Now, if, if somebody is from your area, you can. she uses the word ta to talk to him. Called him ta, which means dad. But it also can mean uncle or close male relative. So she called him ta. Anyway, <coughs> we found out after talking to her about this for, for a while that it was actually one of Frank's brothers that was going there and um, almost being a father figure to his daughter without even, neither of them realising the exact relationship, not talking about it and it not coming out into the open. How amazing is that? I just couldn't believe it. So once um, our daughter met um, the uncle's children, they knew one another immediately because they'd been together as children and they were actually real first cousins. <laughs> Isn't that a wonderful story? Oh. Even, I mean, I've known this story now for um, 10 years because we met her when she was 20. And what is she? She's 31 now, 11 years. And I still get emotional every time I think about it. Anyway, so there's now a daughter and three grandchildren all living in Fiji that we have to go back to and visit and stay with, <coughs> which is wonderful. Um, we're so happy that she's part of our life. And... Actually, of all um, the reasons why I do this business, that's the main one. The family in Fiji, that's, that's my main reason why. Um, Fiji is a third world country, extremely poor. And um, we send money to our daughter to help her. But it'd be much better if we could buy her a farm. That'll be the first thing I do once I can afford it. I will buy her a farm. <coughs> That's why I'm working so hard with the Empower Network. So, what's your why? You got a why? <laughs> you got a why as strong as mine? Hope you do. Find a link somewhere near this video. Click on it and have a look. I know I'm going to... Um, be able to help my family. I've told my daughter I'll be buying her a farm within the next year. That's my big aim. The driving force that makes me sure that it's going to happen. Anyway, till next time. See you later. Bye.